Anointing. Just raise your voice wherever you are. In your household, in your living room, among your children, in your bedroom. Raise your voice and call upon him. This poor man cried out to God and came to him and he came to him. And he answered. And he catered to all his needs. Not some of them, but all of them. Father, we cry out to you. David said, won't you put all my tears in a bottle? Cry out to the Lord tonight. Cry out to him. Tell him I want to see you. I want to feel you. I want to know you. Your word says in the book of Revelation, that you will come down and wipe our tears. Lord Jesus, we know that as believers, we do not cry for note. We cry to see your presence. We cry to see your glory. We cry to see your honor. We cry to see your visitation. We cry to see your desire on us. Lord Jesus, we cry cry tonight. We cry tonight to see your power and your glory. We cry tonight to see your ability and your strength. We cry tonight to see your intervention in our lives. We cry tonight to see your visitation upon us. We cry tonight to see you change our health. We cry tonight to see you visit our children. We cry tonight to see you touch our marriages. We cry tonight to see you change the situation. We cry tonight to see you manifest, to see your word be made truth in our lives. We cry tonight to behold the promises. We cry tonight to testify tomorrow. We cry tonight to encounter your glory. Raise your voice and cry out to him. Humble yourself and cry out to him. This poor man cry out and cried out to God. And he came to him and delivered him from all his problems. Lord, we cry out to you for deliverance. We cry out to you for us setting free. We cry out to you so that yokes will be broken. We cry out to you so that wives will be changed. We cry out to you for divine healing. We cry out to you. You have promised in the book of Revelation that you will come down and wipe our tears. The psalmist has said that you will numerically keep our tears. You will number them in a bottle. Therefore we cry out to you Lord. We don't have anyone to run to we cry out to you Father we come into your presence and shout Lord we lift up our voices there is heaviness in some of our voices there is anguish in some of our voices there is pain in some of our voices but we still cry Lord but we still cry Lord there is no better place to cry 
than in your presence. There is no better place to cry than in your presence. Tonight, Lord, we cry out to you. Intervene in the affairs of our ministries. Intervene in the affairs of our health. Intervene in the affairs of our lives. Intervene in the affairs of our children. We cry out to you, Jesus. We cry out to you, Lord. We cry out to you, Heavenly Father. Oh, lift up your voice. Just welcome the presence of God. Just welcome the power of God. Just welcome for the glory of God. Jesus, you are welcome. Master, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome all of you to tonight's evening service. A special welcome to the Miracle Center Cathedral where we minister love in a hurting world. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you constantly tuning in to listen to the word of God. We are still praying for the anointing on our hands. And we know that as our hands become cleaner and cleaner we will grow stronger and stronger in the word of God. I've been duly informed that the Robert Kanja Facebook page can be accessed. The Jessica Kanja Facebook page can be accessed. The Jessica Kanja YouTube page can be accessed. Our Instagram was tampered with. Instagram and there are people that are pretending to be us and raising money. We are we want to tell you that we don't raise money on any social media outlet. And if you are, um, if, if you come into contact with any of these people saying we have an orphanage and we are raising money just go straight ahead onto that platform and notify everybody and let them know they are liars and do not let anybody defraud you hallelujah Amen. this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it if anyone is lost on the airwaves because the Robert Kayanja YouTube was the most popular but if anyone is lost on the airwaves and you cannot find uh, how to get to us um, just 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 uh, text in and let that um, 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 tell a friend to direct you on how to get to us now we are on DSTV we are on channel 44 we are on Azam TV, TV Zuku TV, Zuku uh, free to air, free to air um, so feel free to tune in to whatever is your convenience. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, one more time, I present myself as a vessel willing to be used of you. I pray that if there be anything in me that is more of me, that I will decrease tonight even as you increase. Let your word come forth as the dividing force that it is. 
to divide us from delayed promises to, to divide us from delayed words to, de to to divide us from delayed responses in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God all the glory. We are still praying around the anointing of our hands. And I know that every enterprise every successful business, every powerful marketing, um, every powerful marketing tool will begin with an idea. We'll begin with a thought. And many of us that are born again and spirit-filled and even some that are not born again like Silas he was not born again but a godly inspired idea was spilled or brought into his spirit brought into his mind and the godly inspired idea was to let the Jews return to their home and rebuild the temple. He was not born again. But the Bible calls him and the Lord called him anointed. Because of the inspired idea. Because of the godly idea. But many times when God drops a word in our heart and in our spirit we ignore it sometimes we don't even know how to respond to this word sometimes we don't even know what to do about this word sometimes we despise the words that have been inspired by God Almighty sometimes sometimes the people around us despise us for living in fantasy land. But we don't know that the word from God is usually the beginning of something powerful. It's usually the beginning of a wonderful business. It's usually the beginning of a great money manifestation of the works of thy hands. It's usually a great start. And never underestimate the ideas that the Lord will speak into your spirit. Because these words from God are not just words. They are God himself. And if they are God himself, God comes to a place when, where he must justify these words. The word justify means to confirm to others that something is right. The word justify means to confirm to others that what I've said is true. The word justify means to confirm to others that you yourself as an individual are, are not fake and what you have been proclaiming is right. And in Romans chapter 8 verse 30 he says those he justified he also glorified those he justified by justify I mean 
prove that someone is right he glorified the, the word justify means to prove your authenticity your validity and when God God's way of justifying you God's way of justifying your word is to glorify you God's way of justifying you is to glorify you he will put a glory on your word so that no one will ask about its authenticity. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us get into the word. Let us get into the word tonight. I will start with Isaiah chapter 61. Verse 1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. I will stop there. Amen. Hallelujah. And it goes on and on. But I have read the first part from verse 1 to verse 3. Our second reading is taken from John chapter 1. I will start with verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. John chapter 1 verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the one and only Son. Hallelujah. Amen. Allow, allow me to couple it up with just one more reading. Only from the book of First John chapter 1 verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. John is saying, that which we had we also saw we also looked upon we also handled what he's trying to say is that we did not stop only at hearing it after we had heard it we also beheld it with our eyes after we beheld, beheld it with our eyes we also touched it and, and, and felt it with our hands. Which means it didn't end in the hearing. It didn't end in just being a word. There was a time when we actually saw what we had had. There came a time when our eyes were open and the revelation of what we had had began to walk in the midst of us. There came a time when what we were seeing we actually got a chance to hold oh 
come on somebody Amen. I want you to know tonight that you are the next John the day is coming when you will testify that it was not just the hearing yes you had God say something to you yes you had God drop something in your spirit yes you had a prophecy yes you had a promise yes you had a word in your prayer room yes you had a word in your dream but like John you are about to say it didn't stop in the hearing it didn't stop in just being a word hey, it didn't stop in my ears just for taking it God came in and justified it oh God came in and justified what I had had and decided that it was no longer just going to be a word. It was going to be transferred from being a word to something I could see. My brother, my sister, that word that was prophesied to you, that word that was dropped in your spirit, that word that was declared to you, that word that was prophesied to you, it is not just a word. You are not going to stop at hearing it. You are going to see it. And like John, you will say, we did not just hear it. We also saw it. You may see nothing now, but I want you to know, you are the next John. You are about to say, after I heard it, I also saw it. I know you are saying, I'm just hearing right now but the spirit is following the right order yeah, the spirit is following the right order it begins with hearing and then it becomes seen and then it becomes a beholding of the eyes and then it becomes something that you can touch tonight begin to celebrate for every word that the spirit of God God has inspired you with for every word that the spirit of God has dropped in your heart. There are ideas that are in your spirit. There are ideas about your future marriage. There are ideas about your future business. There are words about your future ministry. There are words about your future direction. But I want you to know that it will not stop in the hearing. Like John, you are coming back to say, we didn't just hear it. We touched it. Oh, we didn't just hear it. We felt it. We didn't just hear it. The world saw it. We didn't just hear it. I know right now there are people calling you a dreamer. Joseph had a word in his dream. And when he went to his disciples, his brothers said, you are a dreamer. Right now, there are people calling you a dreamer. But they don't know that it begins with the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Let them call you a dreamer. I want you to know that you are not just dreaming. You will say like John, we didn't only hear it. We felt it. We didn't just feel it. Oh, we saw it. Hey, I want you to know that it is about to happen. It may have taken years. It may have taken years. Sarah's word took years. Sarah's word took situations. She even hired someone to try and walk in her word. But it doesn't matter how long it takes. You will be like John. You will wake up one day and you will say, we didn't stop at the hearing. We saw it. We felt it. Oh, 
I want you to know that to whom he has justified he has glorified when the glory came the word became flesh he says the word became flesh and we beheld his glory the word became flesh and we beheld his glory how could the word become flesh do you know that talk is cheap anybody can say I am the resurrection and the life but God knew that if it stayed at a word people would be reciting it and pretending to be like God so he said let me personify this word let me personify let me personify this word let it get born let it pick on flesh let it walk the earth let it begin to resurrect Lazarus let it go to Tabitha's home and pull her out oh let it go and touch Peter to Peter's mother in law then it will say I am the resurrection and the life and people will know that the word is not just saying it the word is really the resurrection and the life that's what I call glorified Jesus is a personification Jesus is a personification of everything that has ever been said and written by God. Let me repeat that. Jesus Christ is the personification that has of everything that has ever been written and said about God. Because if it remained in words, anybody would have said the same things. If it remained in words, anyone would have proclaimed the same things. If it remained in words, anyone would have declared the same thing. Because talk is cheap. And every time you meet people who are just talking and not have nothing to show for what they are saying people begin to imagine that they are cheap but God does not want his word to appear cheap so he says I will justify my word by changing the glory those who he justifies he glorified tonight I want you to know that this is your night for every word that you have heard in your spirit for every word that you have picked in this prayer room begin to pray a justification begin to pray a glorification that word must pick up flesh that word must pick up bones that word must begin to walk so that everyone who doubted you everyone who doubted your God will say surely he's God he's God indeed and he's God of Israel with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they said our God is able to deliver us but God is cheap but, but, but talk is cheap so God justifies their word by personifying the word they have said and bringing that word to walk in the fire so that every word can see that word so that every word can see the glory so that every word can see that power who told you 
that it will remain just a while. Everyone can talk. Everyone can declare. Everyone can say something. But talk is cheap. God is able to glorify everything he desires to justify in the mighty name of Jesus. And at this, in the, on the same note, I want to bring in my character tonight. Tonight, his name is Isaiah. Isaiah lived over 700 years before the birth of Christ. Isaiah was a prophet. And for the, some of the prophets of that time who were not witnesses like Moses, they were simply inspired. They sat down and the Lord dropped a word in their spirit. And there was wisdom in their minds to take what God was putting in their spirit and put it on a piece of paper. And Isaiah was one of those prophets. And he writes in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 over 700 years before Jesus came the Lord has put it in his spirit and he is writing about Jesus and he doesn't even know whether he's writing about Jesus he doesn't even know who he's writing about he doesn't know, who he doesn't know what who it will affect but I I want you to know that there is an idea that God has dropped in your spirit. There is a word that God has put in your heart. And you don't know how powerful that word is. You don't know that it will affect generations. You don't know that it's about to change the world. It is because it is still a word. When they looked at Isaiah in that time, they thought he was just an ordinary prophet. There are others who thought he was a liar. There are others who thought he was fake. There were still others who thought he was mentally disturbed. I know my brother, my sister, that as you watch me tonight, there are people who think you are mentally disturbed because of the ideas that God has put in your spirit. They are incomprehensible. They are too big for people to understand. They are taller than your size. They are richer than your money. Oh, they are larger than your radius. They are greater than your background. And people don't even believe you. But they are insights from God. They are ideas from God. They are thoughts from God. They are drops in from God. I don't want you to underestimate them. Because the time is coming when they will be justified. When the glory will be on those words. And the word became flesh. And we beheld his glory. Some of you right now have ideas of a grand business. Some of you right now have ideas, have words of a great ministry. Some of you right now have words regarding a great marriage. Some of you right now have words regarding a great future. But tonight in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and declare the glory may the word become flesh so you will say like John we didn't stop at the hearing we saw that word we held it in our hands so Isaiah begins to read 
words to write. He sits down and God drops a word in his spirit and it is the word of God. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. To comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion. I don't even need to go further than that. I can stop on verse 3 so that you will know that Isaiah had been dropped a thought had been given a thought had been given a word had been given an insight on the coming of Jesus and his was to document the word regarding the future but because it was just a word it did not set him apart until the word became flesh when that word became flesh when that word became something people could see when that word became something people could hold when that word became something people could witness when that word became something people could look at then people looked back 700 years ago and they begin to they began to look up the scrolls written by Isaiah and they said this man was authentic and they said this man was real and they said this man was true hey people are about to look you up when because that word that you have in you is about to wear bones it is about to have a body people are about to see it become reality it was just an idea when it was dropped in your spirit but it is going to become something tangible something people can see something people can hold something people can understand never despise a word never despise an idea every powerful business every powerful enterprise every rich legacy begins with a word it begins with an idea tonight I want to encourage you to be like Isaiah when you get a word write it down Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 says then the Lord said to me write my answer plainly on tablets write the vision on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others Isaiah when he got the word did not bury it when he got the word he was not ashamed of it when he got the word as confusing as it was he did not pretend he didn't have a word in his spirit he got his pen he got his scroll and he wrote it down and because he wrote it down there are people who 
who have looked it up and they have proved the authenticity of Isaiah they may think you are a liar because of the idea you say that God put into you they may think you are fake because of the word that you are saying God deposited in you they may say you are stupid because of the word that you are saying God gave you but I want you to know that Joseph's brothers were fed by the very word they despised they were fed by the very word they called a dream they were fed by the very man they called a dreamer the time came and Joseph's word put on bonds the time came and Joseph's word did not stop at the hearing the time came and Joseph's word was hard but also seen but also touched hey, the brothers came and what was a dream what was a word that happened in a dream was now reality they were living in it they were seeing it they were touching it I speak the glory to your words and the word became flesh and we beheld his glory when the glory comes together with the word we get something tangible when the glory comes together with the word we pick reality when the glory comes together with the word we get something we can hold when the glory comes together with the word we get something we can embrace the word became flesh the word became flesh and we beheld his glory come on somebody speak the glory on every promise that has been given unto you. Declare the glory. On every prophecy that has been given unto you. Declare the glory tonight. On every prayer request that you have ever produced. Declare the glory tonight. Lord, I declare the glory. I declare the glory. On every word that I have received concerning my children. I declare declare the glory on every word that I've received concerning Nakado, concerning Babidi, concerning Robert Jr. I declare the glory because when the glory comes down and dwells with the word, there is justification. It becomes something that everyone can see. It becomes something that everyone can touch. It becomes something that everyone can feel a, a prophet who lived 700 years ago the word became flesh and even up to now we are still talking about Isaiah because he prophesied about something that became tangible he prophesied about something that we can see he prophesied about something that that became flesh. He prophesied about something that did not stay in words. Something we saw. Something we heard. Something we walked in. Oh, you have no idea that the ideas you have today, the words that are in your spirit, they are going to feed not you, but your generation, your legacy. 700 years from now the idea that you had yesterday will be feeding your great grandchildren 700 years from now the idea that you had yesterday will be changing the world 700 years from now oh come 
God. Amen. If you have an idea, if you have a word from God, do not despise it. Every business venture will begin with a plan. Every business venture is not hazardous. It begins with a plan. You write it down. You exercise it in your mind. It, and then you await justification. You await justification from God. You wait for God to send the glory so that that word will become tangible. It doesn't matter how long you've waited. That word is about to become something that you can see. Isaiah prophesied something more than 700 years before it happened. It was dropped in his spirit. But it is still changing the world. It is still affecting this dispensation. It is still affecting this era. You have no idea how far your word is going to go when it picks up bones when it begins to walk when it begins to run the Bible says write it so that he who reads it will run with it I decree and declare a running of your word every word that was slowed down every word that you have waited for for ages may the glory of the Lord be on it may the glory of the Lord rest on it may the glory of the Lord fill it may the glory of the Lord touch it so that tonight you will be like John and testify that it did not stop on the hearing some of you have had something about your marriage may it not stop on the hearing speak glory to that word right now don't even underestimate it go down on your knees lie on the floor shout glory to that word say word you are being justified and because you are being justified you are being glorified you are a word from God you cannot stop at being hard people must see you people might behold you people have to see that marriage people have to see those children some of you have received a word about building an enterprise declare it right now speak the glory upon it say glory claim justification right now those who he justified he glorified you must be like John it cannot stop in the hearing those things that we had we also saw with our eyes those things that we saw with our eyes we also looked at those things that we looked at we also held it cannot stop at the hearing I decree and declare a seeing I decree and declare a holding I decree and declare a touching some of you have words dropped in your spirit about ministry you see yourself preaching you see yourself declaring the oracles of God you see yourself going to nations it cannot stop at just a word kneel down and shout glory kneel down and shout justification oh when the glory comes together with the word there is tangibility when the glory comes together with the word there is reality when the glory comes together with the word oh 
Because there is a seeing. It cannot stop. A just hearing. Begin to shout glory to every word that he dropped in your spirit. Declare glory. Declare glory in the name of Jesus. Every word that was dropped in your spirit. Every word that was prophesied upon. Every word that was promised you. Hey, come on somebody. To those who justify. He also glorified. I declare justification right now. So that your word will be glorified. They are going to see it. They are also going to touch it. Don't underestimate that word. When Mary got a visitation from an angel. And the angel said to her. That she would be the mother of Jesus. She began to praise God. Not because she had seen it. But only because she had had it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not because she had seen it. But only because she had had it. Show me a man who has had it. And I will show you someone who is about to see it. So Mary began to shout. She said, my heart praises the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. My heart praises him. Hey, come on someone. I speak glory tonight regarding my ministry. I speak glory tonight regarding my future. Oh, I speak justification. It cannot stop on the word. Everything you spoke to me about, Lord, I will see. Oh, everything you declared, I will touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that you ushered in me into, I will walk into it in the name of Jesus. Come on, someone. Isaiah, more than 700 years ago, God dropped in his spirit something that the whole world is hearing, something that the whole world is seeing, something that the whole world is touching. Don't you know that what you have in your spirit, the world is about to touch, the world is about to see, the world is about to hear. Don't you know that what you have in your spirit, the world is about to behold in the name of Jesus. More than 700 years, the Lord dropped in Isaiah's spirit a word that changed the world. A word that brought healing to the world. That word that is in your spirit today. Take a paper and write it down. You don't know how many lives that word will change. Mary only had a word and she began to praise God. She said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My heart praises him. She did not wait to hold Jesus in her hands. She simply shouted the word. Tonight I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus the power the glory justification those he justified he also glorified that word is about to be justified and therefore it will be glorified I speak the glory on that word so that they don't just hear it they begin to see they begin to touch it. They begin to hear it. They begin to feel it. You are going to touch it. Don't despise the prophecy. Don't despise the promise. Don't despise that word. Isaiah declared it early. But they digged up the scrolls and they dread them and they combined Isaiah's teaching into the word of God because his word 
carried with the happenings his word carried with reality his word carried with what they could see I want you to know that when your word becomes something that people can see there will be no limit to your progress there will not be no limit to who you are Colonel Sanders, the man who formulated Kentucky Fried Chicken, he had an idea, and that idea had nothing to do with his education. In fact, he was a school dropout. But he was living at a time when women we are beginning to work and there was a revolution and because women were beginning to work there was a need for them to go home and feed their families and they had nothing to give their families because they had been at work the whole day and Colonel Sanders who had lost his father at an early age and, and taken somewhere to work in the, to, to work because his mother remarried had begun to take care of his siblings at a very early stage and he had learned to cook for them and from that idea he developed a recipe and that recipe he promoted at first it was a thought at first there were words at first it was a recipe on paper but today that word that was dropped in his spirit is feeding millions that word has taken care of his generation that word has become a legacy that word is feeding people around the continent it did not stop on the hearing it became something that could be seen it could became something that could be touched it became something that people could behold I don't know when he was writing those recipes whether he had any idea that there would be a time when these recipes would go around the world. But he never underestimated his idea. And because he did not underestimate his idea, it was glorified. It wore bonds. It wore flesh. And it walked around. Hallelujah. I decree and declare a justification to every word that the Lord has put in your spirit. May it wear flesh tonight. May it wear bones tonight. May it be like the word of Isaiah. One day people are sitting in the synagogue. They, were, they had read Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 for 700 years and one day while they are sitting in the synagogue Isaiah 61 verse 1 walks in he walks in as a young man good looking strong and he goes and reads and opens the scroll and reads and this time he is not the Pharisees he is not the Sadducees he is not the high priest he is that word and he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me but this time it's not just a word 
This time there is a personification of that word. Hey, may the word that God gave you surprise. May that car that you saw in a dream appear. So that it will come. And you will look at it. And you will say this time it's not just a dream. This time it's the real thing happening. This time it is a manifestation. When he returned the captives of Zion, we were like those who drank. One day the real, real, real Isaiah 61 walks into the temple and opens all the scrolls and begins to read. I see your word walking into your household. I see your word walking you down the aisle. I see your word opening the door so that you can live in it. I see your word taking you to preach around the world. I see your word the young man stands straight and he opens the book and he goes straight to where he is and he says this is the fulfillment I am that word except this time I'm no longer a word it's time for glorification it's time for justification it's time for you to look at me what you thought was just a word it's time for you to realize that it has come to pass I'm here to set the captive free I'm here to preach good news to the poor I'm here or to open the eyes of the blind the word is now here it has taken flesh it has jumped out of the scrolls oh come on somebody someone some, I know there is someone who is religious who might be getting angry but I want you to know that that is exactly what Jesus meant he said I have moved from out of the scroll and I'm now walking among the people hey, hallelujah I have moved from just your mouth and I am now going to become visible so that those people who doubted the word will now see me and know that Isaiah, that Isaiah was authentic so that those people who doubted what was written will now look at me and know that Isaiah had from God because I am that word that he prophesied I am that word that he wrote I am that word that oh come on somebody may your word surprise your skeptics tonight may your word surprise those who doubted you tonight may your word surprise those who hated you tonight may your word surprise all those people who said you are a dreamer may it come, may it come and stand before them and say I'm no longer in the dreams I am here and today is her wedding day I'm no longer in her dreams I am here and today is the building of her house hallelujah your word is becoming tangible everything God promised you may you be like John may you say we did not only hear it we saw it we touched it we felt it hallelujah glory to everyone that was ever spoken to you justification to everyone that has ever come your way hallelujah glory to every word that you waited for. May God justify what he has glorified.
and the word became flesh and he dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory all your ideas all your thoughts that have just been words we speak the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May God begin to move. May God begin to move. May his word be made manifest among every skeptic, among every doubter, among those who imagine that you may be lying. May God glorify and in the process justify. As we praise God today, receive the glory upon your word, upon your prayer, upon your promise. Receive the glory upon the word, upon the prayer, and upon the promise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You were my strength. Strength like no other Strength like no other Reaches me 